Hi guys, welcome to this tutorials on the basics of embedded audio programming. I am Renato from Guitars AI and on this tutorial we are going to talk about the hardware we are going to use on this series of tutorial. So we have a Texas Instruments development board here. There is a DSP, a 16-bit fixed point from the C5515 um, series. We have um, an audio codec also here. We have a stereo in, stereo out, some um, LEDs and buttons. We have a USB and uh, we will talk more about this board. We will talk about uh, the IDE and we'll talk about um, the hardware components before we start programming this little beauty. Check you later. So this is the TMS 320C5515 EZ DSP USB stick. Uh, we have the C5515 DSP processor. It's a 16-bit fixed point processor. We are going to talk about this DSP uh, later on. We have the memory is an OR flash memory. We have here uh, the audio codec. So we have a stereo in connector and a um, headphone out connector. We have a USB uh, port and um, JTAG emulator. So we are going to power up this board using this USB port and also we are going to program and debug uh, using this JTAG emulator through this uh, USB port. We also have another slave USB port. We have a Bluetooth uh, expansion, so um, this is expansion for Bluetooth boards. We have an um, expansion connector for 60 signals to access different uh, pins on the DSP, so we have uh, extension connectors for UART, for SPI, I2S, I2C, GPIOs. We have the micro SD uh, card underneath. We have some push buttons, uh, LCD screen, some color LEDs, and this is um, more or less what we have on the board. So I got this board maybe eight years ago. I think this board is already 10 years old from 2010. I'm not sure. At that time, it costed $79. I got it from a DigiKey. I think I paid something like 70 euros. I don't remember. But unfortunately, I think nowadays it's um, much more expensive. Even though um, this is already a note board, we have already this the C55, uh, 45 and 35 and other uh, processors. And here is the block diagram of uh, the board. So we have the processor here. We have this external memory interface to communicate with memory. We have here the USB uh, port with this uh, embedded uh, XDS 100 JTAG emulator. And this JTAG bus here. And we are going to debug and program uh, this processor using this JTAG interface. We have here the um, I2C bus to control the audio codec and the, and the um, OLED display. And we have the I2S for audio signals from the uh, audio codec and the um, C5515. And um, so uh, here we have this bus protocol. So we have a um, uh, USB slave port as well. We have the JTAG, I2C, I2S. So we are going to talk about uh, all these components in more detail and about these um, bus protocols. The digital signal processor in this board is the C5515. And if you're not familiar with a digital signal processor chip, it's something like a microcontroller, but optimized for specific operations. So a digital signal processor can be um, a fixed point or a floating point device. The fixed point uh, device is designed for integers and fractions. It's uh, usually cheaper, faster and have low power. The floating point uh, devices are designed for floating point data types. If you're not familiar with floating point data types, you can see it 
like something similar to scientific notation of numbers. Yeah? There is um, a value that dictates precision and an exponent that controls dynamic range. And usually the floating point devices, they have a larger dynamic range, but in comparison to the fixed point devices, they are more expensive and they um, uh, use more power and sometimes they are slower. Another um, important part of the digital signal processor is the number of bits. In a very, very superficial explanation, the number of bits can be seen as the size of the data units that the processor can work with. So for example, um, for the CC, the C5515, it's a 16-bit fixed point processor. And there are also processors which are 24 bits, 32 bits, 64 bits. And all these bits are related to registers, to memory, to addresses. So yeah, in a very, very superficial explanation, it's something like the size of the data units that the processor can handle. Another important thing to note is the JTAG. So here in this block diagram, we've seen that there is this uh, JTAG uh, interface here. And the JTAG, it means the joint test action group. So it's an interface that um, provides a way to communicate directly with the chip. And it allows testing, programming, and debugging. Yeah? And also, the components in a board can be daisy-chained, and they can be uh, accessed. To handle audio information, this board has an audio codec, it's the TOV320AEC3204, and an audio codec is uh, a chip that handles both the analog to digital and the digital to analog uh, conversion. So this um, audio codec here, there is a stereo audio DAC, with a 100 dB signal to noise ratio. It has a stereo audio ADC with 93 dB signal to noise ratio. It has programmable inputs and outputs and has an integrated PLL, a phase locked loop. And we are, we are going to talk about PLL uh, in the future. Also, it's important to take a look at the buses. So there is uh, a squared C bus to control the uh, audio codec and I, I squared S bus to uh, handle the audio signal. So the I squared C is the inter-integrated circuit and the I squared S is the inter-integrated circuit sound. So the I squared C allows multiple slave digital integrated circuits to communicate with one or more master chips. And the inter-integrated circuit sound is a serial bus designed for audio data and it has uh, the clock and the data uh, separated. We will talk more about the DSP, the audio codec, the I squared C, the I squared S when we start taking a look into some programming examples in the next tutorials.